Very good. Nice to have your company. We've been given the COVID roadmap, which is a huge relief. It's a, a big lift of the weight off the shoulders. It gives us a sense of hope, certainty. But I can't believe indoor pools won't be opening until the 1st of December. Not only do people want to be able to go and have a dip, but our kids desperately need to get back to their swimming lessons. Summer's right around the corner. And if your child doesn't know how to swim, well, it could be deadly. Liberal MP Melissa McIntosh is the member for Lindsay in our western suburbs. And uh, Melissa joins me on the line this afternoon. Melissa, welcome to Drive. Thanks for having me, Jim. I know you've been quite public about this, but you're a, a federal coalition MP, so you can help to really drive change. Why aren't our indoor pools and indoor swimming lessons starting until December 1? Why the wait? Well, that's a very good question and a question we are all asking uh, parents, uh, swim schools in my community are certainly asking that, and I'm asking that question on their behalf, and we're hoping that the New South Wales government uh, will change, I guess, the decision when it comes to indoor swimming pools because these are, these are the facilities that carry the heavy lifting when it comes to teaching our kids to learn to swim. And right now, 250,000 miss lessons each week. And every day we're not getting our kids in the pool is another day of a missed lesson, another day that they're not learning those vital mm. skills coming into summer. Well, I get the whole thing about getting them back into classrooms, and I, I think it should have happened way before October 25. But the bottom line is there is, a, there is a great need for kids' mental health and just for their whole well-being to get back face-to-face -face classroom. But swimming lessons and learning how to swim for our kids is absolutely vital, especially the fact we're coming out of lockdown. People want to travel over the summer holidays. You know, they're around water. We grow up, grow up around water, whether it be you know, the beach, the pool, water holes, whatever, camping trips. They need to learn to swim. Well, that's right. And being in Western Sydney, I'm talking on behalf of my community, we've been locked out of the beaches. So what's the first mm. place people want to go? Going to go uh, with their kids over summer, it's to the beach, it's to the Nepean River, it's to our lake. Mm. And really, really concerningly, uh, drowning rates are up 108% in that thought to four-year-old age group. So mm. we need to do something about it. We need to make sure that getting our kids back into the pool is a top priority. I'm actually calling for the Commonwealth and the lockdown states to have a, an intense back to swimming program, not to have our indoor pools closed, but I'm actually teaching our kids. Yeah. Uh, so I think the priorities are all a bit wrong here, and I really do hope that the South Wales government uh, reassesses this. I spoke to Health Minister Brad Hazard on the program yesterday, and it seems to me, I put this question to him about these swim, swim schools and, and indoor pools, there seems to be they might be starting to reconsider. Are you getting that impression? Uh, I, I feel like the doors open a little bit on this, and I think swim schools are hoping, and we're hoping today that we might uh, hear something and a bit of a, a turnaround. I think they should be considering it. Swim schools, as you said uh, in your introduction, uh, went through COVID before. They reopened. There hasn't been any cases of transmission. Uh, the swim schools that I speak in my community are really up to date. You know, they've, they've got good ventilation uh, in their facilities. They're doing the right thing. They just want to get kids back in the pool and to do their job in teaching the kids. Uh, so we really hope that uh, there is some movement on that, but uh, we're yet to hear. Okay, and it's not just the safety of our kids as well, Melissa. It's the, it's the ability of these indoor pools and their employees to stay on their feet. Now, the state's job saver payments are continuing, which is great. But Josh Frydenberger, the federal treasurer, is planning to end the COVID disaster payments for individuals once we hit 80% double jab, which will be in you know, mid to late October. Now, I'm all for this, uh, all for this for people who can go back to work but are simply refusing the vaccine. But for businesses like indoor pools, who the New South Wales government are banning from opening up before December 1, these employees could end up penniless for more than a month. I mean, it's just not good enough. Well, I think uh, we would be very surprised um, when it comes to uh, indoor pools remaining closed, like if, if it stays like that. Uh, there is an expectation that when things open up, businesses should be able to go back and, and do their business. Mm. And it is the state that is imposing health restrictions. Yeah. So it will be up to the state to, to support. And I hope that you, I, I, we all hope that things turn around and, and indoor pools do open up and we, we're not in this situation. But if we are, I think the state will need to look at whether there's targeted support okay. uh, for facilities like this. And, and I know that the two treasurers are, are discussing these things. So you're the, you're the federal MP for Lindsay. Do you think that the federal government once we hit that 80% threshold, whether it be the 18th or the 25th of October, do you, do you hope that they are saying across the board businesses should be open, absolutely open slather, including swim schools and indoor pools? Well, it was always only going to be uh, temporary. 
and it was an emergency measure. And particularly when uh, when it comes to swim schools, I strongly feel there would be an expectation that that they would be opening up. Uh, They're delivering an essential service to our kids. Uh, Right now, and I'll keep fighting this, we need to get our kids back in the pool. Swim school needs to, they need to operate. Uh, They have um, issues when it comes to retaining their staff as well. And if they don't provide that service to their staff, then then who will be uh, teaching our kids? We need to keep those instructors on board. So I really really do think uh, it is up to the state to to turn this around. Well, I spoke to John Harker, who runs the Carlisle Swim Centres as a general manager, and I spoke to him before coming on air today, and John's very passionate and very vocal about this as well. He's basically saying that these staff members, if 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 they're not paid, these individuals, for four, five, six weeks, they'll leave the industry... And there's already a shortage and a demand to actually get get good swim teachers through the door. It's the, that's the last thing we need. Oh, that's absolutely right. They need to have that certainty. And swim schools tell me they uh, were under the, the strong assumption that they would be opening up at around 7% and things that have changed uh, since then. So they, they had a message that they would be operating. So their staff were thinking that as well. So it's all a bit of a surprise. Uh, I, I guess swim schools are feeling frustrated. But most of all, they're feeling concerned about kids. And we've got a petition running, and just in a few hours, we have a 1,000 signatures. So people are going onto my Facebook page, they're signing the petition. We're going to keep pushing this. Uh, People are being heard, but we just need to keep the fight up. Yeah, and I I think some people would say, well, hang on a minute, outdoor pools are open. Why can't the kiddies go and learn in outdoor pools? But it's it's not not, not about that, especially for young, young kids, toddlers, whatever. They they, they need to be in an indoor pool to learn how to swim. Well, it's a capacity issue too. Outdoor pools yeah. can't carry the full load of getting our kids back into swimming. And if we're wanting to fast track swimming lessons, you're thinking 250,000 lessons missed a week. We can't, can't rely on outdoors, outdoor pools uh, to provide that. Mm. As I said, the indoor pools do uh, carry the heavy lifting when it comes to educating and training our kids in swimming lessons. Yeah. In the West, we've got popular indoor pools like the Nepean Aquatic Centre, uh, the Dive-In yeah. Swimming Academy in Jamison Town. I mean, your constituents who can't get to the beach and who want, actually want to get their kids back to swimming school, they, these centres, they've, they're COVID safe. We've seen before during COVID that they've been open. That, that uh, you know, I just, they must be sitting there going, come on, please, come to the party, come to the table. We want to get our kids back in to, to learn how to swim. They provide such an important service to our community. So many families use these swim schools. And as I've said, they've seen them once before that they can do the right thing. They've got COVID-safe measures in place. Uh, there's been no transmission at these indoor pools. Uh, they're ready to go. Mm. They just want to be able to open and they want to be able to open because they want to make sure our kids are going to swimming lessons and we don't have a national tragedy when it comes to summer. Mm. Uh, it is yeah. really concerning what could happen over summer if kids aren't getting in the pool very quickly. Yeah, well, that's got to be top of mind and that's why we've led the charge for the last couple of weeks on this program about this. It's really important, you know, not just as far as kids' mental well-being, but their safety. I mean, the, we've seen that if they don't know how to swim, the consequences can be dire and, and, and can result in, in drownings. We don't need that. Keep rattling the cages, Melissa, and we'll, uh, we'll stay on the case as well. Will do. Thank you so much for your support. It's such an important issue. Good, then. Thank you, Melissa McIntosh, Liberal MP and member for Lindsay.